It's just us. I brought the Inquisitor. My name is Taud, and I'm at your service, Inquisitor. I'll take all the help I can get. I know the Wardens have troubles of their own. I wonder, though, might those troubles have anything to do with Corypheus? Mm, I fear it is so. When my friend Hawk slew Corypheus, Weishaupt was happy to put the matter to rest. But an archdemon can survive wounds that seem fatal, and I feared Corypheus might possess the same power. My investigation uncovered clues, but no proof. Then, not long after, every warden in Orlais began to hear the calling. I recall that being a bad thing, but I don't recall you telling me about all this. It was a Grey Warden matter. I was bound by an oath of secrecy. You think Corypheus is using this calling to control the Grey Wardens? Not precisely, Your Worship. The calling warns a Grey Warden that his time in this world grows short. And every Grey Warden in Orlais is hearing that right now. They think they're dying. Yes. Likely because of Corypheus. If the Wardens fall, who will stand against the next blight is our greatest fear. And then they do something desperate, which is of course what Corypheus wants. How can Corypheus make all these Wardens hear the calling? I cannot say. We know little about him, save that he is dangerous. He is a Magister, as well as a Darkspawn, and speaks with the voice of the Blight. That lets him affect the minds of Wardens, since we are tied to the Blight ourselves. It must be how he created this false calling. Is the calling they're hearing real, or is Corypheus mimicking it somehow? I know not. Even as a senior warden, I had heard only the vaguest whispers of Corypheus. The wardens believe that this calling is real, and they will act accordingly. That is all we know for certain. You said all the wardens are hearing the calling. Does that include you? And also you, Blackwall? Sadly, yes. It lurks like a wolf in the shadows around a campfire. The creature that makes this music has never known the love of the Maker, but at times, I almost understand it. We must uncover what Corypheus has done and end it. This cannot stand. I do not fear the calling. And worrying about it only gives it power. Anything Corypheus does will only strengthen my resolve. So the Wardens are making some last desperate attack on the Darkspawn. We are the only ones who can slay Archdemons. Without us, the next Blight will consume the world. Warden Commander Clarell spoke of a blood magic ritual to prevent future Blights before we all perished. When I protested the plan as madness, my own comrades turned on me. Grey Wardens are gathering here, in the Western Approach. It is an ancient Tevinta ritual tower. Meet me there, and we will find answers. Let's go. We should get to the ritual tower in the western approach as soon as possible, Your Worship. Clarell's the warden commander, right? What's she like? She was a good warden. Among those King Kaelin reached out to before the Blight. She always resented missing the chance to help. When the calling came, Clarell stopped listening to the rest of us. Only magic could solve this problem, she said. Do you think Corypheus is using the calling to control her? It's hard to say. I have heard the whispers of the calling myself, but it's only noise, no words, certainly no commands. Either way, the guilt is hers. She's Warden Commander. She should bow to no one's word but Weishaupt's. Corypheus was in a Warden prison, right? So 
you must know something about him. I do little, and that much only because of my relative seniority. Most wardens have never heard of him. When I suggested Gryphius might have something to do with the calling, the warden mages turned on me. I trained some of those wardens myself. If I knew any more of Corypheus, I would share it, your worship. What's it like being a warden? I can't even imagine. It's been a long time since I was anything else. It becomes your life, searching out Darkspawn, killing them, ensuring no one ever knows how close they are. We'll talk later. I heard what he said. Hopefully we'll find some answers in the Western Approach. Though I fear what those answers will be. I've seen too much blood magic to ever trust where it leads. Let's go. Let's go. I can keep staring at this, but I won't get any closer. Something I can help you with? Yes. Possibly. You recall the demon at Therenfall? The one impersonating Lord Seeker Lucius? We never found the real Lord Seeker. Or his body. Indeed, I've seen no hint of any Seekers amongst the Red Templars, or anywhere. I have a growing suspicion Corypheus has imprisoned them. Why imprisoned? He could just as easily have killed them. Not easily. But yes, they may be dead. Yet a demon of envy does not kill whomever it replaces. It hides them away and learns about them. There must be a trail we can follow. Yet so far I have only discovered hints. But they could have ended up just like the Red Templars. Seekers do not use Lyrium. I assume Corypheus gained control of the Templars by corrupting the Lyrium they were already taking. To do the same to a Seeker, you'd have to force the Lyrium upon him. That may be what happened, but it couldn't have begun that way. We're missing a piece of the puzzle, Inquisitor. I need to find it. Finding them obviously means a lot to you. I left the Order. But I can never abandon them. 
I cannot even claim that rescuing them would be beneficial. They wouldn't look kindly on the Inquisition. But even so, if there's a chance... If we can spare resources to follow up on these leads, Inquisitor, I would appreciate it. Crestwood has had no further trouble with the undead. After what happened, it will take time for the village to recover. Someone's turning into a bit of a dragon hunter, I've heard. Let's see what we have. at your service. Here is the request Harriet made. I... a request has been made of you, Inquisitor. Here it is. As you were. Yes, Inquisitor. Questions, questions. I should go. You know where I'll be. What can I do for you? I'm interested in what you told me of yourself and your studies. 
If you have time, I'd like to hear more. You continue to surprise me. All right, let us talk. Preferably somewhere more interesting than this. Why here? Haven is familiar. It will always be important to you. We talked about that already. I sat beside you while you slept, studying the anchor. I'm glad someone was watching over me. You were a mystery. You still are. I ran every test I could imagine. Searched the Fade, yet found nothing. Cassandra suspected duplicity. She threatened to have me executed as an apostate if I didn't produce results. I would never have agreed to that. You were in no position to argue. You were never going to wake up? How could you? A mortal sent physically through the Fade. I was frustrated, frightened. The spirits I might have consulted had been driven away by the Breach. Although I wished to help, I had no faith in Cassandra, or she in me. I was ready to flee. But you stayed. I did. I told myself, one more attempt to seal the rifts. I tried and failed. No ordinary magic would affect them. I watched the rifts expand and grow, resigned myself to flee, and then... It seems you hold the key to our salvation. You had sealed it with a gesture. And right then, I felt the whole world change. For all our sakes, I'm pleased that you stuck around. As am I. You have fractured rules of man and nature. And you will shatter more before you are done. To visit me here? And you, not even a mage. What do you mean? Where do you think we were? This isn't real. That's a matter of debate. Probably best discussed after you... Wake up.
sleep well? I've never done anything like that before. Do you regularly talk to people in dreams? No. Consider that one more rule you have effortlessly broken in your rise to power. I had no idea that the Anchor would allow you to dream with such focus. It is truly remarkable. But I am reasonably certain we are awake now. And if you wish to discuss anything, I would enjoy talking. I'd like to hear more about what you saw in your exploration of the Fade. I would be happy to share it with you. Tell me about the old ruins you explored. I found the ruin of Barandur, a lost to Winter City very deep beneath the dead and barren wasteland. Volcanic ash had sealed it tight. In one dark moment, every living creature in the city seared and smothered. They were statues in the ashes, like a mold made to recall the lost. Tell me about a spirit you encountered. I met a friendly spirit who observed the dreams of village girls as love first blossomed in their adolescence. With subtlety, she steered them all to village boys with gentle hearts, who would return their love with gentle kindness. The matchmaker, so I called her. That small village never knew its luck. Tell me about the old memories you found in the Fade. I saw a savage human horde go marching toward the battlefront. They sang a soldier's hymn to keep formation. Primal music shook the ground. These savage, unwashed warriors carried harmonies no chantry choirs mastered. Though their cause was all but hopeless, they sang songs that made the spirits weep. We'll talk later. Goodbye. What can I do for you, your inquisitorialness? Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. Thanks, Varric. No problem. you came to talk to me I'll talk to you later probably have you seen otherwise hey you need me see you later Bo nice talking with you boss I'll ask around again tomorrow thank you inquisitor a title hard to rhyme a challenge for another day I think Forgive me my distractions, Eminence. I'm overwhelmed by you and what you've done. My name is Meridan, a humble bard. What do you bring to the Inquisition? A simple thing that you know well. The power of a muse to rally hearts and minds. Inquisitor, I want to spread the word of what you've done. A small but vital role. Perhaps I'll also make a coin or two. Are you a bard, like those of Orlais? Oh, heavens no. I'm a minstrel first. My weapon is a cutting tongue, not blades. I hope my skills will help in some small way, if only I can give your deeds their due. Carry on, then. Oh, I will do my best, Inquisitor.
Consider it done. Giselle said the maker is acting through me. He doesn't have anything in mind anymore. So Almost gotcha. 
Did you need something? Is there anything I should know? Creating Inquisition footholds outside Skyhold has strengthened our reputation. People view us as a stabilizing force. We've received a number of recruits eager to pledge themselves to our cause. That's all for now. Should you require anything, I'll be here. Strangest thing. When I reached down, my dagger was gone. Just gone. Know where I found it? I am at your service. As you were. Of course, Inquisitor. You have it. The infusion. I do. Then you are ready. There are benefits that flow. Abilities. First, you have a choice. Make it. I'm ready. I will make this mine. Then let us break you.
Yes. What do the people make of us? There's scarcely a noble house that hasn't openly pledged its support to us. Let's speak later. Goodbye. your service. Perhaps we should search about a bit.
rumors after all. Or they left with the rest of the mages to join their descendants. You'll be joining up soon, Your Worship. We all do. Thank you for all you've done.
history of the Grey Wardens is fascinating. Here is the request the leader of the tradesmen made. Anything interesting? A letter regarding a friend. I mentioned Alexis to you, didn't I? His son. I was trying to discover what became of him. Where he ended up. And? Nothing. Redcliffe is abandoned, and there's no trace of him. It's as if he never existed. I think the Venatori found out he was helping me. I think they killed him. Are you all right? He was ill, and thus on borrowed time anyhow. It doesn't mean you can't regret his death. I know. Felix used to sneak me treats from the kitchens when I was working late in his father's study. Don't get into trouble on my behalf, I tell him. I like trouble, he'd say. Tevinter could use more mages like him. Those who put the good of others above themselves. What was he doing in Redcliffe if he wasn't part of the Venatori? He was there with his father. In fact, Felix was the reason I knew where the Venatori were. He planned to help if you came to Redcliffe, I understand. He had so much more than I to lose by helping. He should be alive, not I. You make it sound like he was a better person than you. What a mad thing to say. Few people are better than I. Very well, a better person, clearly, not nearly as handsome. Thankfully, Felix wasn't the only decent sword kicking around Thedas. The Inquisitor's work is never done, I see. You said Alexius was a mentor of yours. He was my patron. Sponsoring me to the higher levels of the Circle of Magi. In return, my successes were his. I had a lot of successes, naturally. Alexius was most pleased. He and I used to talk over Brandy about the corruption. How we could one day make real change in the Imperium. And then he... gave up. He stopped trying. Why did he give up? 
On a journey to Hosburg, a Darkspawn raid killed his wife and sickened his son. I remember hearing the news. He hadn't been there, you see. Alexius was convinced he could have protected them. The guilt tore him up. I helped him with his research for a while, and then we drifted apart. That must have been difficult. Back then, I was furious. I told him to snap out of it, move on. I thought I had all the answers. Later, I regretted my hasty words. But we didn't speak again until he approached me for the Venatori. Too much pride, I suppose. Plus, I was busy drinking. One must have priorities. Was it hard being away from him? It was hard not having a patron, yes. I'm not exactly built to fit in. At any rate, he's dead now. More's the pity. I should go. As you wish. My Lord Inquisitor, it's good of you to speak with me. I have news regarding one of your companions, the De Winter. <sighs> Has Dorian done something wrong? No, thankfully. It's nothing like that. I have been in contact with his family. House Pavas, out of Carinas. Are you familiar with them? He's mentioned his family. They don't appear to be on good terms. Yes. I believe you're correct. The family sent a letter describing the estrangement from their son and pleading for my aid. They've asked to arrange a meeting quietly without telling him. They fear it's the only way he'll come. Since you seem to be on good terms with the young man, I'd hoped... If you think I'm going to trick Dorian into meeting his family... Oh, I feared you might say that. The family will send a retainer to meet the young man at the Red Cliff Tavern, to take him onward. If he truly does not wish this reunion, he can always end the matter there. I pray you change your mind, Inquisitor. Perhaps their letter will persuade you. If there is any chance of success in this, it behooves us to act. Mayor Gregory Dedrick of Crestfoot is present for betraying his own constituents. He confesses that, ten years ago, he flooded old Crestwood to kill refugees and villagers touched by the blight. The mayor claims it was to spare the rest of Crestwood, but we only have his word. If the mayor has anything to say in his defense, let him speak. There's no cure for the blight. But I couldn't convince anyone to leave a sick child or husband behind. So you herded the infected into one place and flooded old Crestwood? Were no innocents caught in the waters? Nearly everyone in the village had the blight, I swear it! Have mercy. I couldn't tell the survivors I'd drowned their own families to save them. I... I, I couldn't.
You committed murder on Ferelden's soil. Let them deal with your punishment. Send him to Denerim. He can live the rest of his life behind their bars. In prison? Maker. I should have drowned with them. The mayor claims it was to spare the... So you... Have mercy. I couldn't tell the survivors I'd drowned their own families to save them. I, I... I couldn't. You lied for ten years about your crime, then fled after confessing your guilt. For avoiding justice, you are exiled from Ferelden. I doubt the Crown will disagree. I knew your coming meant the end. One way or another. The mayor claims it. You committed murder on Ferelden's soil. Let them deal with your punishment. Send him to dinner. Let's see what we have. I understand the Inquisition has tracked down the missing seekers. Care Oswin. I didn't see Ban Loren as the sort of nobleman that would become involved in this war. The sooner we go there, the sooner I can put this search behind me. Do you have any advice for me? We must root out the Venatori. The Tevinta Imperium cannot be allowed to gain a foothold in the south. That's enough for now. Another time, then. <laughs> 